It's Monday, so that means it's time for a new episode of the Joust About Careers podcast, where you can learn about careers from the people who are actually in the trenches every day. I'm your host, Brian Brott, and I'm a career advisor and English teacher at Van Buren High School who wants to see all people make good career and life decisions. My guest today is Jennifer Irving, who is finishing dental school, is an ensign in the U.S. Navy, and will then serve as a dentist in the Navy upon graduation. Jen shares about how she decided to join the Navy, how her life will look as a dentist, advice she has for current students who want to be dentists, how important it is to take initiative when pursuing an internship, and much more. I hope that what Jen shares today will help all of you make better career decisions and have fulfilling career journeys. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Joust About Careers podcast. And today we have 2015 Van Buren graduate Jen Irving with us. And she's going to be talking about her experience going to Ohio State to become a dentist and also joining the Navy in the process of doing that. So, Jen, I really appreciate you being here today. And I'd like to start out by just asking, what does your current life look like as someone who is preparing to finish dental school? Yeah, so my day-to-day is in clinic. So the first four years of or dental school's four years, the first two years were really didactic, like book focused, lots of tests and exams. And then the last two years are really clinical focused. So typically I go in, we have two clinic sessions starting at 8:30 and then they end at 4:30. So I see two patients a day. And it's slow. I mean, that's not like a typical for dentistry, but that's how you learn and everything is checked off like step by step. Um, but at this point I'm done with studying. I've taken my board exam and I'm done studying. So my life's kind of free right now, which is unusual, (laughs) but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just go to clinic. So usually I think of boards that it would be after all of your classes are done. So are you basically done with classes and it's just in the clinic and you're practicing what you're going to be doing as a dentist? Yeah, so dentistry is unique in that, that you take your boards while you're finishing school. And the reason they do that is so that you're licensed pretty much right when you graduate so you can start working. There's not really like a delay. So there's four different board exams. One of them was a like written exam that was several hours. I finished that and then there's a couple clinical boards and I'm like halfway done with those, but you don't really study for the clinical ones. You just have to do it. So the, and all of my classes are officially over. They ended in December. Okay. That has to feel good. (laughs) Yeah, it is is a good feeling. (laughs) So what's the state of dentistry in our world? I mean, I know we have shortages in a lot of areas. Are we short on dentists? Is it difficult to find a job as a dentist? Uh, How does that look? So there really isn't a shortage of dentists. Um, It's very regulated. So like in dentistry, you know, there are only two dental schools in Ohio are Case Western and Ohio State. So my class has 120 graduates. So every year there's 120 new dentists. That's a large class. Like in the country, there's only like 66 dental schools. So some states don't have them. Some states have two, um, 120 is on the larger side, but when you're graduating from dental school, everyone really does get a job pretty easily. Um, the biggest thing is where you're going to practice at. So certain areas are highly saturated with dentists and other areas need dentists. So for instance, like Finley, like there are a lot of job opportunities in Finley. I've had like dentists reach out to me, my friends, like they, if you want to work in Finley, like there's jobs there. Columbus is harder because everyone that goes to school here wants to stay here and everyone has to kind of spread out. So if you're interested in working in like a rural community, I mean, Finley is kind of rural. I mean, it can get even more, but uh, there's a lot of opportunities. So what was your plan when you left high school? Were you thinking about going to school to be a dentist or did that, is that something that came about once you arrived at school? So when I was in high school, I wanted to be an orthodontist when I was in like eighth or ninth grade. I had braces and I just felt like 
that experience was really transformational, like made a huge difference. And I, I wanted to pursue that. And then for um, our shadow day, I remember like calling the orthodontist and I was like, can I shadow? And they were like, unfortunately, like we're closed like that day. So at that point I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go to the dentist like that I grew up going to. And I shadowed her. And that was really when I fell in love with the career. So that became like a big turning point. And I was very dedicated, like from that moment on that, this is what I was going to do. So when I graduated high school, I had the intent of going to dental school And that's kind of what led me to go to Ohio State for my undergrad because they have a dental school there. And that's something like I think is important for people to keep in mind if they already have that goal. Like if you go to a school for your undergrad that has the professional program there, you're just going to be better set up to get accepted into those programs and more prepared for them. Um, So I had that goal going in. If you had to guess, what percentage of your classmates at dental school are Ohio State undergrads? I would probably say 40 to 50 percent. Okay. Like 40 percent. I mean, a lot. Like, if you do well at Ohio State, you have a good chance of getting in. Okay. Better than if you went to, like, anywhere else. Right, right. So, one of the unique things about your experience and part of why I wanted to interview you was the fact that you've joined the Navy and uh, you're just telling me that you've uh, actually been in the Navy for four years. So I'd love to know what led you to go down that path, if that's how that even came onto your radar and what does that look like for you going forward? Mm -hmm. So when I was a freshman at Ohio State, I was pre-dental. So what that means is you go in, you have a major, but then you have a track for a professional program. That just means like you have to complete so many prerequisites to get accepted into that program. So they don't necessarily like go with the major. You have to kind of like do that, some work to figure out that. But I was on the pre-dental track at this time. I didn't have a major and I was attending the pre-dental club meetings. And my freshman year, I remember sitting there and it was like a Wednesday night and there was a Navy recruiter came in And they talked about opportunities in the military for dentists and what that looks like and how it can help with school. And I was like, wow, this is a really like cool opportunity. And I remember leaving, I called my parents and they were like, okay, Jen, (laughs) that sounds like (laughs) great. Like whatever, just kind of blew it off. And from there, I, you know, it, it was just kind of in the back of my mind. Nothing really came from it at that point. But then fast forward to my junior year of college, I interned in DC at the American Dental Association. And through that internship, I worked with their political action committee. So primarily what we did was we talked about dental issues with congressional members. And, you know, one of the main things we talked about was student debt. And I was kind of like the spokesperson for dental school student debt and, um, how that impacts like your life after like after school and from that moment you know it kind of became more relevant and I like important for me to think about how much debt really you take on through pursuing a career in dentistry and what's like a good strategy to combat that and then also while I was there I talked with lots of dentists and I would ask like what's your advice like I'm starting I'm applying to dental school like do you have advice young student young dentist and they were like oh go into the military like do it like it's the best thing you can do for your career um they'll help you with school it's a great place to start your career so after that summer that was my junior year I was applying to dental school simultaneously and I submitted my application at the end of the summer. And then when I got back to Columbus, I reached out to a Navy recruiter and then they helped me put together my application. So I was, I applied for a program called the health professional scholarship program. So it was a four year commitment to the Navy and they would pay for all of my school. Um, And so once I got accepted to dental school in December, then like 
a month later, the Navy notified me that I was accepted and like awarded the scholarship. And so then following graduation, I commissioned into the Navy. And what does, what did that mean for you? So when I got commissioned into the Navy, that just meant like I signed the papers and um, that everything kind of started. So my orders were to go to school and then that's really all the like contact I've had with them up to like recent. Okay. So the first four years was really, their first three years was really just go to school and they would pay my tuition every semester. And they, I get like a monthly uh, stipend from them and that was it. There was no, no interaction until now. Now it's like all starting. Okay. But you have been active duty for the last three and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so what will it look like when you graduate from dental school? So after I graduate, I'll start, I'm either, I'm kind of up in the air right now. I might do a residency. I was accepted and offered a position in the residency program, but I don't know. I might be doing that. I might not. So it's a little uncertain, but essentially I'll be a dentist. Like I'll be a fully licensed dentist working for them. So I will go to work. My work will be on a base. Um, and my patients will be sailors and we'll do dentistry. So it's not like that different from civilian dentistry. I mean, dentistry is what it is. Like it doesn't really change. The job is, is the same, but the environment's definitely a lot different. Right. Now, boot camp and things like that, that's not something you have to do? So we have something we have to complete um, that's called Officer Development School that I'll be doing this summer after I graduate. It's five wow. weeks. Um, the main thing, there is like physical fitness standards that everyone has to pass, but they do a lot of teaching about the military and the values and, you know, how the operations work and that is super important because also once I graduate from dental school, my rank will switch from an ensign to a lieutenant. So I'll be an officer and that training is a lot to like learn the rules of being an officer, what that means, like what your leadership responsibilities are. And if you wanted to, you could stay in for 20 years and retire, correct? Yeah. Okay. They definitely want you to do that. I'm, oh, do they? Okay. They would, they like, I mean, there's a lot of bonuses. Like if you stay, you can get retention bonuses and, you know, they want you to like, not just get in and get out, but they understand kind of either way. Right. Now, if a person coming out of high school knew, Hey, I want to go be a dentist. Is there really anything the military would do for them at that point or in dentistry and other medical careers? Is it more once you're done with your undergrad, then that's when the military starts saying, yes, we're interested, we'll pay for things, so forth. So you could do uh, like an ROTC program um, with the Navy or any of the military branches in undergrad, and then also try to do HPSP. I would not recommend that because anytime the military is paying for your school, you owe them time. So if you did that and they paid for everything, then you just owe like a lot of time. Um, okay. and sometimes they want you to, they don't, I don't, I don't know a lot about ROTC, but I don't think all the time they want you to just go into professional school. I think that sometimes they want your service and then it'd be kind of like back and forth. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you are in, and I, I mean, the cost of dental school is way surpasses undergrad, like by a lot, like the average student debt in dental school is like 300,000. So, wow. um, I would just recommend like doing HPSP and not worrying about ROTC. Did you explore any other branches when it came to dentistry? No. Um, I really loved like the locations in the Navy and um, there was a large recruiting base in Columbus for some reason. So they were really good to work with and they helped because that really helps you get accepted. The recruiter is the one that puts together your package and you have to have the grades and the experiences and all the things, but they're the ones that like put it together. It gets submitted to a committee. 
the committee reviews it and then then you interview but the recruiter does a lot of the behind the scenes work okay now will you you know again we think military we think uniform uh, yeah. but also we think dentists we think of a uniform um you know are there times where you'll look like a dentist and times when you look like a soldier or will it always be one or the other or how does that work day to day it all look like a dentist so i'll be in scrubs okay uh, but yeah there's opportunities and like moments when you dress like an officer and you put on like the white uniform and it it's definitely a balance of both it's not just a dentist you know you're you have two hats you're a dentist and you're an officer so they kind of go back and forth but right yeah that internship experience sounds like that was really interesting too is that something a lot of dentists do is they do those internships or is that was that unique to you that was kind of unique i i participated in a program through ohio state that I had a grant to go do something and I knew I wanted to do something relevant to dentistry. Typically, like if you're building your dental resume, you know, you do a lot of research. Um, and I didn't love research. It wasn't something I had a lot of interest in. So I kind of sought out other opportunities and then I emailed the American Dental Association and like asked like, Hey, do you have any summer internship programs? And they were like, no, but we can make one for you. And I was like, okay, like, do you need, do we need an interview? Like, what do we need to do? And they were like, oh no, like the fact that you reached out shows us that like, you're committed, like, we'll see you in June. So it was really awesome. It was a really, really good experience down there. And I think that's good for students to hear that, Hey, sometimes it just takes you, or takes the student making the first attempt or the first step uh, and that can really open some doors. That's interesting. If there's students out there who are thinking about dentistry as a career, what advice would you give to those students other than explore the military as a potential way to, to pay for that schooling? I think the hardest step is getting accepted. Um, once you're in it, they'll help you. There's a lot of support to find a job and to, you know, get your career started, but getting accepted is the hard part. So my advice is to really learn how to study, like, because the grades really do matter when you're trying to get into a professional program. So, you know, there's a lot of things that matter, but if you don't have the grades, it's just like, that's kind of where it stops. So I think like, if, even if you're really naturally smart and school, high school seems easy and, you know, you get good grades, like try to get a 100%, like try to learn as much as you can, like learn how to study because that is what's going to like help you get through each class and building like, you know, good grades and a good GPA. Um, so that's the number one thing I would say. Other than that, it's just, you know, be involved and try to be well-rounded in different areas with volunteering and research, if you want to do research internships, you have to definitely put a lot of time into like building your application. Um, but yeah, the school is probably like the number one thing I would say to focus on. And then the rest of it is just checking off the boxes, you know, Right. You have to volunteer so many hours. You have to shadow so many hours. Like you have to be committed to it. And you also like the one thing I would definitely say is like, you really have to believe that you're good enough to do it. Like if you don't even think you're good enough to get in, like, why do they think that they're going to think you're good enough to get in? Like you need to know that you've done like everything and that you should be accepted. Like you have to have some confidence that it will happen because if not, like other people's will outshine yours. Right, right. As you think about the difficult parts of becoming a dentist, uh, what's maybe the, the area where it's been the biggest struggle? I mean, I think that the biggest struggle was probably freshman year of college. Um, like chemistry was really hard. I think that's what like a lot knocks a lot of people out um, right away. And you know, just kind of persevering through that was really 
hard because it's a lot different. Like I did really well in high school. I loved high school. Um, and when I got to college, it was definitely like a shock that I don't know why I wasn't as prepared to realize the shock, but it just was like, you know, Van Buren's small it, and Ohio State, like my first class had more kids than our entire high school. So <laughs> <laughs> you just have to kind of like, I don't know, you can't really prepare for that, but I guess just knowing like it's going to be a lot. Other kids are going to be coming from schools that they're just more prepared than you might be. And you can't look at that like as a bad thing, but you just need to know like you got to hustle a little harder in the beginning and like take it really seriously because some people are coming in ahead of you and how college is like graded, it's all based off of a curve. So if you're not in the top like third of the class, like you're not getting the A or the B. So you are competing against the whole grade. It's not like you go in and you just have to get, you know, a certain grade on a test, like in high school and it's average, the whole grading system is different. So that was really surprising to me. Um, and just trying to like keep up at first, but I did fine. Like I, it ended up working out like really well, but it took a lot at first. Right. What's the best part about attending Ohio state? Um, I think just the overall like culture of it, it's like fun being a part of something really big and you get to meet a lot of different people. You never really cross paths with like the same people like over and over. Like you constantly met new people throughout it, hmm. which I really liked. Right. So as you think about, or as we wrap up, um, as you think about your experience in high school and now all of the things that you know as a result of going through your schooling, joining the Navy, so forth. Uh, what do you know now about life or careers that you wish you had known when you were back in high school? Professional careers are different than other careers. Like there's a, def a strategy to them and you really got to figure out the strategy early on. Um, I think if I would have had someone, I did have mentors, I sought them out, but I wish I would have had them earlier too. Like it took some time to kind of create those relationships, but in finding out the strategy and there's a lot of resources available, like online, like you could look up like how to get in dental school, how to get into medical school. Those are things like you just have to follow them. I know that's not the best like advice for someone, but it's not really unique. Dental school, medical school is not unique. Like you have to just do the things. Um, you can try to do the things to set you apart, but what it comes down to like, honestly, checking all the boxes and then interviewing. And then that's really how you, how you get in. So I would just say the more, you know, the better off you're going to be. So if you know, like I have to get, this is the GPA I need to shoot for. I need this many hours of shadowing. I need patient care experience. I need volunteer. I need to do. So then you can start working on it when you're young. Like you could start right when you graduate high school, you know, volunteering and getting those hours that maybe towards the end, you know, you, you don't really want to worry about. Right. Yeah. Well, Jen, I really appreciate you sharing about your experience and uh, appreciate your service to our country and all that you're doing with that. And uh, good luck as you finish dental school and move on into the Navy. And uh, thank you again for joining us to share about your story. Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Joust About Careers podcast. I hope you learned valuable information from this career story. And to be sure you don't miss upcoming episodes, please click subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform so you'll know when the next episode is released. Thank you for watching. And as always, this is the place to go to learn just about careers.